Welcome to morning prayer on Saturday the 9th of May. Um, when we come to our prayers we'll include uh, prayers for our Bishop, Bishop James, who's been uh, uh, off work now uh, suspecting that he has uh, symptoms of COVID-19. So consent for him and all the others who are in a similar position. Uh, his symptoms are not serious at this point. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ. Let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all, in living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our psalm this morning is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon him and be radiant, and your faces shall not be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps round those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. For the, fear the Lord, all you his holy ones. For those who fear him lack nothing. Lions may lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is there who delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying word. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken-hearted and will save those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the troubles of the righteous. From them all will the Lord deliver them. He keeps all their bones so that not one of them is broken. But evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants and will condemn none who seek refuge in him. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading today is from Exodus chapter 40, so this is the last chapter of Exodus, and we'll pick up the story uh, again in the book of Numbers, but for now, Exodus chapter 40, starting at verse 17. In the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was set up. Moses set up the tabernacle. He laid its bases and set up its frames and put in its poles 
and raised up its pillars, and he spread the tent over the tabernacle, and put the covering of the tent over it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the covenant, and put it into the ark, and put the poles on the ark, and set the mercy seat above the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle, and set up the curtain for screening, and screened the ark of the covenant, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the table in the tent of meeting, on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the curtain, and set the bread in order on it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting, opposite the table, on the south side of the tabernacle, and set up the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting, before the curtain, and offered fragrant incense on it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He also put in place the screen for the entrance of the tabernacle. He set the altar of burnt offering at the entrance of the tabernacle of the tent of at the entrance of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and offered on it the burnt offerings and grain offerings as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it for washing, with which Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet. When they went into the tent of meeting, and when they approached the altar, they washed, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set up the court around the tabernacle and the altar, and put up the screen at the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting, because the cloud settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the Israelites would set out on each stage of their journey. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, before the eyes of all the house of Israel, at each stage of their journey. There's a lot of detail there. It's, uh, yes. yes. So I was trying to make some sense of this and trying to picture what this was because uh, before now we've heard mention of the tent of meeting which was just a tent that Moses had set up outside the, the camp where the people came to him. He'd go inside the tent, meet with God and he'd come to the entrance and people would, would come to him. But uh, then we've had in previous chapters uh, lots of description of all the different things, the lampstands, the basins, the what material the uh, tabernacle was to be made of and all those jewels and everything, uh, 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 gold and silver and everything that was brought. So everything, it seems, was now ready and it was now time to put it up. And I was thinking about uh, Moses uh, setting it up and I was remembering going to Greenbelt and trying to set up uh, my tent for camping and how grateful I was uh, to other people, um, particularly uh, Noel, if he's watching this, uh, helping me set my put my tent up because it's a very difficult job putting a tent up on your own. And this was uh, a whole lot bigger <laughs> than your tent. <laughs> so <laughs> Moses, it, it only mentions Moses, but he must have had help because yes. some of the <laughs> dimensions are uh, beyond what one person could do themselves. Yes, and it seems as if there's the tabernacle. And then inside the tabernacle, there's still the area that's called that is the tent of meeting. Like when later on they built the temple, there was the temple, and then in the innermost part there was the holy of holies. So presumably this tent of meeting is like the equivalent of what later becomes the holy of holies, and the tabernacle later, uh, when they settle in Jerusalem, they build the, the temple, uh, and. Uh, all these different things as the Lord had commanded Moses. Uh, lots of detail. And it's a very similar description in Chronicles of the building of the temple and Solomon is there in place of uh, Moses, though Solomon has a very different sort of role. Uh, and this reading ends with uh, the glory of the Lord filling the temple and uh, Moses isn't able to enter and in Chronicles it describes the this great set piece consecration of the temple and the glory of the Lord filled the temple so the priests could not minister 
So there's a mm. parallel between the two. Mm. And still the cloud and the fire leading them. All the way. Mm. A Song of Solomon. Many waters, waters cannot, cannot quench love, love neither, neither can, can the, the floods drown it. it. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If all the wealth of our house were offered for love, it would be utterly scorned. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall be forever. Amen. Luke chapter 4, starting at verse 31. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a city in Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. They were astounded at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out, cried out with a loud voice, Let us alone! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. When a demon had thro uh, thrown him down before them, he came out of him without having done him any harm. They were all amazed and kept saying to one another, What kind of utterance is this? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and out they come. And a report about him began to reach every place in the region. Mm. Well, it describes Capernaum, and uh, as usual for Luke, he describes it as a city. And uh, Luke's idea of a city is very different from our idea of a city. So Capernaum in our uh, understanding would be a, a large village. It's got a population much bigger than Nazareth, but Nazareth's only 400. Capernaum, population of 1,000, 1,200 perhaps, uh, situated right on the north edge of the uh, Sea of Galilee. So whereas Nazareth is a backwater, Capernaum is uh, a central point in terms of the location with a major road going by. Mm. But the emphasis in Luke isn't really on the geography at this point, it's on Jesus' authority. And uh, so right at the start he spoke with authority and then right at the end, uh, what kind of utterance is this? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits. So Jesus' authority being Luke's real point. Yes. Yesterday we had him in, uh, in his hometown in Nazareth and there they were all amazed but then they turned on him whereas uh, here the people in Capernaum don't have the same uh, sort of axe to grind with him the uh, um, uh, report about it began to reach every place in the region uh, yeah well, what amazing authority yeah and there Jesus pointed out that the prophet is seldom accepted in their hometown mm. which uh, is, is a bit of human nature that we can understand. Yes, here he's uh, a day's journey away from Nazareth, going on foot, um, but uh, it's a new place, a new place where he's, he's settled. Mm. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? And we will have the Benedictus today. The Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen from, from the tomb, tomb who for, for our, our sakes, sakes hung upon, upon the, the tree. tree. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, 
holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Let us pray. And Heavenly Father, we do pray for Bishop James. We thank you that his symptoms are mild, and we pray that they may continue that way, and that you will bring him through this disease. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who, like him, are suffering various symptoms, uh, not yet diagnosed, maybe, but nonetheless seeming to represent this COVID-19. Mm. And Father, we pray too for those whose symptoms are more serious, those who find themselves in hospital and needing intensive treatment. And we thank you for the availability of the health service to stand with them at this time and minister to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering from other uh, ailments, uh, not COVID-19. Lord, we pray for those who are awaiting operations, sometimes quite serious operations, uh, for blocked arteries and uh, uh, similar. And uh, Lord, we pray for them in their anxiety as they wait uh, for uh, a, uh, the postponed date to, to come through and to have their treatment. Pray, Lord, for those who are having chemotherapy and other treatments. Um, we pray, Lord, for, for them. It must be, a, it's bad enough to have a serious ailment, but to um, have treatment delayed um, creates so much more anxiety. The Lord, we pray for the medical staff uh, and that they might be able to make the right decisions at the right time. And we pray, Lord, for um, everyone awaiting treatment or undergoing treatment. And we, we just pray, Lord, for your peace uh, and for your healing. And we do thank you, Lord, for for the medical staff uh, who are dealing with the, the non-COVID um, conditions that uh, you would guide them and bless the work that they are doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we pray more widely for those who are suffering from anxiety, from the mild sort of uncertainties that our situation provokes, to those who have a, a, a more deep-seated and problematic response to all that is around them. Heavenly Father, we pray that we may be able to watch out each one for our neighbour. We pray that you would give us wisdom in the things that we say and help us develop our understanding. Heavenly Father, we bring before you those who are most acutely affected and we pray for your interventions in their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we pray for our government. Uh, we pray for our Prime Minister as he prepares to make an announcement uh, tomorrow, Sunday, uh, about the lockdown and about the, the strategy going forward. Lord, we do pray for real wisdom and guidance in these uh, strange times as they... Uh, the chart unknown territory uh, we do pray Lord for uh, a right way forward uh, for our nation so that we might remain safe remain mindful of one another's safety uh, but yet be able to take some steps forward so Lord we pray for our Prime Minister and our government uh, as they work together to find the right way forward. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.